it's Deprogrammed. My name is Justin Wilson, and I'm a host guy. I do things and talk into microphones. It's fun. I like it. This uh, is Deprogrammed. This week we don't have a band, and you may have noticed if you're watching on the YouTube, I'm sitting in a chair. Yes, it's been that kind of couple weeks. Uh, I hurt my back, and I didn't feel like standing, so I'm sitting in a chair. That's the uh, long story short. I'm lazy. I'm always in a chair. <laughs> it's been uh, it's been it's been a chaotic couple weeks. Um, of course, a few weeks back we had the big all day you drunks, and it was a tremendous success. It was a great time, but it's also where I, I got my injury for being stupid. Oh, you know, before I before I get into this and why we're doing the show this way uh, today, head over to radiofradio.com slash shop buy a t-shirt. Um, we're actually going to have the first run of them in hand, uh, hopefully within the next week or two. And thank you, Nathan. Appreciate it. Um, we're going to have the, the first run in hand uh, shortly. So you're going to want to get them soon before they uh, before the first run is out. Be the first one to rock a double middle finger shirt on your block because it's cool, Jack. And also you can go to patreon.com slash radio F radio. And, uh, you know, for as little as a dollar a month, you can help support and keep afloat a local independent internet radio station that wants to do bigger and better things for you, the listener. And uh, today I'm joined by Matt in studio. I was here. Hi, bye, Matt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the way it works out most of the time. I was here. You were here and you asked me what the show was tonight. And I was like, well, here's the thing. Uh, we had the all day you drunks, you know, it, and again, it was, a tr- it was a resounding success. It was a great yeah. time. Everybody had fun. We had a everybody lot of people. We had a lot of people. There's a lot of pickles. There's a lot of talking. A lot of talking. Um, but <laughs> come Tuesday, when it's time for Pop to go on the air, actually a little bit before, I was on my way. Yep. I happened to be leaving the 7-Eleven. I got some coffee and I check in the Slack and Matt's like, yeah, we don't have internet. It's like, oh, great, here we go. So I'm like, well, I'm already on the way down, just going to come down. And uh, doing all the troubleshooting, the, the guys the, the guys on Co- at Cox give you nothing, basically. They give you nothing. Nothing. They obviously they knew, the knew that there was a problem. Yeah. Why don't they lead with that? Why don't they just tell us that? But nope, they go through everything. And then uh, to the point where, okay, well, I'll send a guy out. No, now, the problem was created by them. They yeah. blew up basically every every router that was my type of router. Right. Uh, so the the router that the RFR studio is on. Anybody who has that router, dead, 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 completely dead. 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 Uh, so they knew what the problem was, and they, instead of saying that, they actually said, "Well, we'll send a guy out." Yeah, because then, and I hear that, and I'm like, "Oh, well, then they're going to charge us." I was like, yep. "Don't do that. Take the route." I was like. I, I I grabbed the phone. I was like, "Well, how about this? Let's we'll take the router back to a to a to a cock store. You guys can you know swap it out, right?" He was like, "Well, yeah, of course." Well, there you go. Well, then why didn't we just do that? Why, didn't why we did why that? is why did we why did we troubleshoot for an hour? Had to get our time to get money is valuable. Yeah, uh, but I get here and uh, of course the problem's not solved. There, I mean, there's nothing we can do. So we had to call the night. Um, fun little play. Of man, I can't believe like it's the. If you don't listen to Popped, you should. At the very tail end of Popped, every week is the Kanye Twitter, uh, Kanye West <laughs> Twitter, bot. Twitter bot, and you know he has all these sage tweets that he he tweets out, mm-hmm. and you know he's just on the show every week. Uh, and then last week, we the program was supposed to be on Kanye West, so we think that Kanye found out about this and decided to shut us down. Fuck RFR, I'm shutting them down. Because he can shut us down. Oh, he can. Which is way easy. Yeah. Because he's Kanye West. (laughs) Kanye West. He's got K-West money. That's right. Uh, So, honestly, you just need a pair of clippers and uh, and knowledge of which wire does what. Yeah. I hope people don't do that, (laughs) though. Don't do that. Please don't do that. (laughs) Because I was actually pretty bummed out that not only did we not get popped or deprogrammed last week, but we lost Wednesday Wednesday as well. I mean, there was just... The turnaround was too high. Like, there was no way we were going to be able to... Because, I mean, you work, you know? <laughs> Don't when, I? When are you going to... that the truth. When are you supposed to install the modem? So, we lost Tuesday and Wednesday last week. That was, you know... And then, 
through that whole time, I'm dealing with a back issue. It wasn't so bad last week. That's I think that's what's got me way thrown off. Is well, this week is bad. I think this week has been worse because uh, we had all day you drunks, and that was kind of draining. So last yeah. week we were kind of down, but then uh, your back has been just ripped to shreds so yeah. you haven't been on uh, up to 100 percent. no i'm getting killed at work yeah so i haven't been 100 percent. if you listen to good morning drunks yesterday <laughs> it's quite apparent yeah well and uh, again th- these are the reasons i like to stand usually for my shows yeah. is I, I i feel like i can be more energetic uh sitting down i usually just feel lazier and well i think a lot of this comes from the fact that we do consistent weekly shows you know many and of them <laughs> they're not all going to be great no. we're going to have some that are going to be a little down just because of uh of of you know things like this yeah. you're back my work schedule uh and then you know and then crippling depression that we all deal with yes that's <laughs> one of the record uh, the prerequisites to work on the rfr show it's true it's uh crippling depression yeah uh the devil bit was funny though the devil it, bit was since funny. it came out of nowhere it did uh, it was an RKO. Yep. Wait, wait. Did it come out of? Did it come out of nowhere? It came out of nowhere. Okay, okay. Was it delivered by uh, Randy Orton? No. <laughs> Sorry, it is not an RKO. Damn, damn this flow chart. So I thought it'd be fun. I don't know how many people are listening or um, how many people saw the post earlier, but uh, I thought it'd be fun to kind of ta- take a look back at some of the D programs we've had because. I haven't really had a chance to reflect. Like we've done like thirty something episodes at this point. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to sit back. Thirty individual bands. Yeah, (laughs) and God knows how many of those were like full on discoveries for me. Like you did, you were doing a lot uh, the last few shows. Yeah, I I, I mean we're at a point where I'm running out of the bands that I'm highly familiar with, so it's going to be a discovery almost every week. Um, you know, we're going to do Red Hot Chili Peppers next next week. I'm familiar with them because I like their early work. I hope that James and Corey don't like their newer work because then there may be a problem. I know one song that needs to get there. It's a little song called All Around the World. It <laughs> has to be. Um, I think we're pushing Kanye West to two weeks from now. I still have to talk to Sarah and Katie about it and make sure. But uh, I know Sarah's out of town, mm-hmm. so... You know, it's it's a thing. You know, we'll we'll get it worked out and and get back on the track eh, once again because Kanye decided to shut us down. It's 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 put deprogram into chaos. Yeah, manageable chaos, manageable chaos. And I mean, you know what? We had the week off last week, and this week is sort of a week off. I'm, I didn't have to like try to cram a bunch of tunes to a band I didn't know, <laughs> <in my laughs> which is good because yeah. I don't think you could. That's a lot of work. Week. <laughs> you know, it, it, it sounds stupid. But like, if there's a band you're not familiar with at all, like completely, and you're and trying you've to gotta listen to all of their, and then come up with ten songs that yeah. you think are their best, yeah, which means you can't just listen to their discography once. Nope, you have to try to, and you have to find really nitpicky reasons to lose songs too, to like just get them out of there, so you get a manageable number of songs that you're gonna listen to. It's a, it's a lot of work, and but it's fun. I love it, and uh, that's why we continue doing the show. Uh, I'm not sure how many of the sh- the deprogrammed episodes you've listened to, but uh, I was just wondering, is, is, are there any bands that you've discovered through this show? Any any bands that you decided to... <laughs> yeah, ICP. <laughs> no. no, I know you listened to that uh, and actually liked that I, episode. I like the episode. Yeah. No, because I'll usually... I, there hasn't been a band so far that I haven't been familiar with. Right. Because uh, I... I don't know. It's weird. I I I don't consider myself like super music guy. Yeah. But deprogram pretty much hits on all of the bands that I'm pretty much familiar with. Well, you know, I'm I'm a '90s guy myself. So like anybody put, puts up <laughs> a '90s band, kind I'm kinda, of we've yeah. been heavy on the '90s bands. Yeah. So and I well our tastes are pretty similar. So They're not, we're not too far. We're off. not too far off. So a lot of the bands that have been on so far, it's it's all stuff that I'm familiar with. And if it's not like Steely Dan. I don't like them, <laughs> you know. I just I, like I know I don't like them, yeah. and uh, and the program unfortunately isn't going to turn me around on it. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I maybe maybe Red Hot Chili Peppers will be the band. I'm with you. I like their earlier stuff. I pretty much like. I kept giving it a try after uh, One Hot Minute was great. I loved One Hot Minute. 
a very 90s record. They mm-hmm. switch guitarists. They bring in Dave Navarro. I mean, we'll talk about more about this next week. But Californication, I loved when it first came out, but it wore out on me fast. I just hate and then, that album. And then I, I kept trying with, but, you know, here we are with them. So I'll, mm-hmm. I'll see how this conversation goes next week. I'm curious to see because they're younger. They're now, much younger than I will say. I, I will say one thing uh, about Deprogrammed. I Even the bands that I don't like. Yeah. I those are usually the shows that I like the most. It's usually a good conversation. It's nice to hear. It's always a good conversation. I don't think there's that there's been a bad episode of Deprogrammed. I know you think that there's one out there, <laughs> which we won't say which one. Oh, it's the back one. It's the back one because <laughs> you you guys decided to fight. I mean, it was bloody. Like it was just all three of us were in very separate corners. Like I was trying to play the game, and my brother Rob went direct just his favorites and he went super deep and james had a mix of super deep and uh radio stuff Mm -hmm. that both rob and i didn't like so it's like he had dreams and we're like oh that's a terrible song (laughs) so but but when you have like none matching like every single song song you play it's like you need to hit somewhere well i think i think beck is a is a great great a uh, uh, great artist to kind of to kind of dissect with the program though because uh because his 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 music is so over, all over the the map yeah like it, it, there's some just such garbage <laughs> there's there a, a lot, lot of his, garbage out there a lot of his newer stuff but then sure. some of his uh some of like uh like a lot of the the sea change stuff on sea change change is amazing it's just is trans it's just transcending yeah uh whereas I don't know, Midnight Vultures. Eh, there's take some it. stuff that I would like to punch in the face. I would like to make it. I would like to take the song, yeah. turn it into a real person, oh. punch it right in the face. Wow. Uh, Beck was fun. I'm trying to think of another one where we had some. We had we had trouble on Costello. Actually, it was a great conversation. Mm-hmm. A lot of fun. Um, I do like when you discover a band like Elvis Costello and realize how much you should have been listening to him yeah all along yeah because i i th- this is kind of the stuff that i discovered as well and honestly it, it, ever since the introduction of the ipod because you know i was a real real early adopter of the ipod uh so when itunes kind of started coming out and you could just steal a bunch of music put on it wait no i didn't mean steal <laughs> buy buy yes no but when you could buy good compilations of artists you know that weren't so much because it feels like iTunes has done a good job of uh, of putting out compilations that aren't like the traditional uh, uh, best of packages. Uh, so, like one of them was, I think I got a, like an iTunes exclusive, like just Elvis Costello. And uh, so when I listen to you discover Elvis Costello like that, it just kind of like reminds me of 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 what I like about discovering new music. And uh, and gets me jazzed to go out there and kind of find new artists. Yeah. I don't know what the hell I'm saying. I lost my point in there somewhere. Well, Elvis Costello Super Drag was another one that I was super impressed with. And it's like, man, I can't believe I missed them. Because that yeah. Super Drag, if you listen to Super Drag, is almost on the nose a Justin band. Mm-hmm. It is a Justin sound. Even their hit. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, I think the problem was like the hit is is but poppier than the rest of the. It is popular, but that seems like the kind of eclectic song that you would have latched onto. Yeah, and I I did, but I just never sought out their. I never yeah. sought them out. And that makes sense. Well, there was so much it, so much happening in the nineties. You know, I was I dove hard into the Pumpkins, and I dove hard. In, well, you know, Deftones probably around that same time, and. Actually, a lot of hip hop, like Biggie and mm-hmm. well, mostly Biggie. So just Puff Biggie. Daddy and the Family, and Biggie, I and like, Puff Daddy and the Family. I like Puff Daddy. <laughs> I like Puff Daddy because of uh, Godzilla song. Oh God! And then, yeah. well, what are we doing? We're just remaking a police song, but making it terrible. Well, that whole soundtrack we is terrible. So you're gonna miss, Fre- you're gonna miss Biggie. Freaking Green Day did the same song for that soundtrack, only they added a Godzilla sound in it. Darn it. Ah, darn it. Ah, darn it. I remember that. It's terrible. There's a good Foo what Fighters was... song on that album, though. Oh, God. The Wallflowers. Ugh. Uh, doing Bowie's 
uh, heroes. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> um, if you're listening live and you'd like to call in and uh, talk about, you know, maybe a band that you discovered from Deprogrammed or a band that you decided to delve in deeper with, the phone number seven five seven eight four eight five nine two zero. Well, you'll take your call and uh, get you right on air. That's true. Um, so who was number one? Who was the first band? Smashing Pumpkins. One with a bullet. Fitting. I, I mean, there was no other way for me to go. Um, and that that was hard. How do you guys think you did with the list? I'm actually looking at the list right now. I think we did great. Uh, I was bummed because my favorite song is Set the Rate of Jerry. Mm-hmm. And it immediately got shot down. Wow. I was, it was me and one other guy, Daniel Four Lines. Um, and he was like... Man, like, I think I I was the dick in in the Smashing Pumpkins situation because yeah. I went deep. Like, I went. It's rough like when a it's real your favorite. favorite. Yes, yeah. because <laughs> I thought that I was gonna have a problem with new pornographers. I thought I was gonna have a problem. <laughs> well, you did <laughs> doing the. <laughs> it wasn't the problem I thought I was gonna have. And then I mean, it was. A... I thought the problem was gonna be me and James. I thought me and James were gonna see you eye to eye. Yeah, and he was gonna pick a lot of stuff that I wasn't gonna pick, and then attack me for what I picked. Yeah, and then I'd have to flip a table. <laughs> so it's hard when like you're really, really attached to a band, yeah, and you you're kind of going in to play the game, but at the same time you you've got band. a real attachment to the song. Yeah. So it's like how you know how do you deal with somebody like I think uh, the same could be said to uh, with Weezer. Weezer was because it was it was rough doing it with uh, with Zach who was defending some of their newer stuff. Yeah. And me just hating a lot of the newer stuff, <laughs> yeah. which probably isn't fair. And that's where the program really, really sets itself apart because, um, because like a band like Weezer, it forces you to number one listen to a lot of their newer stuff because you you know you've got to you've got you can't just throw it all out and just say I'm not going to pick something from here no nope. because there may be something really good so it really kind of makes you look at the entire discography and then say okay am I just picking a lot of these songs because they remind me of being 18 you know 17 and 18 nostalgia being young yeah am I being harsh on these newer songs because it's not the stuff I was listening to in high school or Weezer they was not very good much songs. like they're just not like good songs, and I think there's a there's a there's a nice mix. There's a it's, nice mix, and I think the program forces you to. And you know, I wish I would have had more time because I wanted, I actually wanted to delve into the newer records because I knew Zach was going to have mm-hmm. have newer ones, and I wanted to did. be able, to, I wanted to be able to say no, and here's why right. instead of no because it's newer. <laughs> uh, but I. You know, I, we haven't had a non-fun ep. Actually, Ben Folds was one of the most fun episodes I had, um, mostly because we talked a lot about dicks and uh, chat roulette. And actually, at one point, because uh, Keith, <laughs> which actually it it ties into, it's yeah. not like you guys were just doing non sequiturs. Yeah, uh, I had Keith and Katie in, and um, Sarah, who is a co-host on Popped, she stayed along because uh-huh. she's dating Keith, so they're together so she stayed and she's sitting over there on her laptop and we start talking about chat roulette and you know how he did it at the concert and suddenly i look over and sarah has chat roulette propped up on like a chair over there and <laughs> she's chat letting you guys it's, it's yeah directed over at us so we're on chat roulette while we're doing the show i, I mean it's it's a silly stupid little thing but it but was a lot fun. of fun yeah. yeah it's fun and i think you know and ben folds that was a, a discovery for me too uh-huh. like Again, he's. It's one of those ones when I man, I should have been listening. I don't, I don't know how I missed that. I like that rock in the suburbs song. Me too. <laughs> I, it, I loved it for some reason. That, but I just I passed it, it. He he as a musician passed me yeah, by. Yeah, because you think why. of Brick. Yeah, which I mean, I love that song too. It's a good song. I love I love uh, whatever and ever. Amen. That's a really good album. It really is. Oh, see, there was one after that too that I just absolutely love. Something about Reinhold. Or well, you know Meister what was weird because 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 uh, what happened was. <laughs> Uh, obviously, you know, like Brick and that, you know, the Ben Folds Five comes out, and you know that's that was a huge, huge, huge hit. You couldn't get away from that. Yeah. Well, then, you know, I forget about Ben Folds, and I'm walking through an arcade, and um, I don't know, in the turn around the turn of the century, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and that Rock in the Suburbs song is playing, and I'm like, what is this? And it's Ben Folds. Yeah. It's weird how music and musicians sometimes like will weave in and out of your life and i mean that's why to take it back to smashing pumpkins that's why they're my favorite band mm-hmm. like 
they never leave out other than their yeah their hiatus from 01 to 07 uh, that's that's the only time and that's technically we, they didn't go anywhere cuz I, I was continuing to yeah, listen yeah and we've done a couple of bands that i feel that you and i specifically are are real flag carriers for and that uh, the uh, the president's god I definitely was, do you know how happy i was that we got to do the president's yeah because initially i thought you were the only other presidents fan i knew yeah. and then brian popped up and uh i for a second i got scared that we were gonna have to push it off because i thought maybe he wasn't gonna be able to do it because that was around a, a, mm -hmm. a time in the station's history <laughs> but we decided fuck it let's have him on history <laughs> We got a history so fast. Yeah, we did. I, but we were like, "Fuck it, let's just have him on." And then Nathan, Nathan uh, decided that he was going to delve in too. Yeah. And so, like the two newer, two or three newer records, I hadn't been familiar with. I was f more familiar with their earlier work. And I think Nathan was really familiar with the first two. Yeah. And then, or maybe within three with Pure Frosting, but yeah. it had pretty much tapped out after that. So we were, we, were, I was really happy that we were able to. Show him how great Freaked Out and Small is. Yes. And then he latched onto that album with just playing it over and over and over. Yeah. And I was like, yes, I know. <laughs> it's almost as, it's, it might even be, in my opinion, better than the first two. Yeah. I mean, I, with, with the presidents, it's hard for me because two is so, so perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Like, like, one is great. I love one. It is. But, but when you go back and listen to two, but and two I remember has envelopes. I remember. Yeah. It sure does, and that's what we love. Yeah, it's, it's what we love. It's I mean, perfect intro, perfect outro. It's everything I want in a record. I think you and I specifically have this problem with deprogrammed. Is we're in love with track ones. Yep, and we love a nice bookend. We yeah. love a nice uh, intro and a nice outro. Yeah. Uh, we like symmetry to our to our albums. Jenny Zell uh, is on the uh, yeah. the YouTube machine. She loves the presence now, thanks to deprogrammed. Good. Yeah, I mean, it's who else? Nobody else is talking about the presidents in depth like that. No, nobody's talking about like new pornographers or mm -hmm. uh, Ben Folds even. No, you know? not really. And there's probably some kids. And I'll tell you, and I don't, know, I don't know if if Jenny may agree with this too, because uh, she's kind of in our our age category. But I kind of like doing some of the programs that we've done. I like doing them with some of the younger kids who yeah. weren't who we were into it. some of the older stuff. Yeah. I'd like listen to the older stuff, but well, well after. Yeah. Cause there's a, there, you know, there's a couple of, a couple of people that we've had in that we are, did the Nirvana episode with, with Taylor. Yeah. And he's much younger than us. Much. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't, uh, wasn't really listening to music when, you know, when yeah. we, cause it's just weird having conversations with them because they didn't, they didn't live through it. And I think that, that, that brings a different dynamic definitely to the conversation. Yeah. Uh, but it's weird just to having this talk with somebody and it's like, Oh, you don't remember when like Kurt overdosed in <laughs> Paris before, right before he died. Like you, you weren't around for that. You yeah. don't remember this. <laughs> this was huge. It was all over MTV yeah. news. What? You don't remember Tabitha Thorne and Soren and, uh, and MTV news. What about Kurt Loader? Where were you kid? <laughs> you heard it first. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's just, it's little moments like that that I think uh, really makes the program stand out. I think it's fun too because, like now, as we because we have a pretty much a steady rotating cast. I'm trying to get yeah. new voices in frequently, but you know sometimes it just doesn't work that way. And Jenny Zell's a, a great example. She when she's putting her list together, she knows she has to play the game some because she knows I'm here, and she knows that I like track ones and those are going to stick out to me. So sometimes. She'll take a track one just because she knows there's a good chance I'm <laughs> yeah, going to have gonna it. Do it. So, and it's there's some gamesmanship to it, and I think, I think that's a lot of fun. And I think so far everybody who's come in has had a great time, and that's what we're aiming for. And hoping that somebody enjoys the band that we're talking about. So hopefully somebody will take that starter kit, and that's the way I'm trying to present it. Is we're making a starter kit for yeah. that for that artist. Check these songs out and. Maybe you'll like them. I th I think that 
we haven't done a bad one yet. There hasn't been a band that I, there's going to be. Uh, that point. we haven't done a bad starter kit for? Because I'll disagree. New Pornographers. We did a bad <laughs> starter kit. Because they're going to be like, a third of this album is some guy I've never, not a single <laughs> song was on uh, on these ten. This is a completely different sound. <laughs> well, I thought this was supposed to be about this band. Oops. <laughs> Our bad. Yeah, well... <laughs> Sometimes it just works out that Sometimes. way. Sometimes. I mean, I guess that's the down downfall of a, a band having three separate songwriters when it comes to something yeah, like this. Exactly. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna gravitate to some of the others. Yeah. Eh, that's too bad. Um, I feel like I feel like we were at least honest about it. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see. Where's my our Radiohead list? I'm really proud of our Radiohead list. I need to stop twisting like this. That's what hurt my back in the first yeah, place. Don't do that. Um, there hasn't been a band that I haven't liked yet either. There's, you brought up Steely Dan earlier. I, <laughs> you know, it's the Steely Dan's it's at the bottom my of my list. Um, but even them, they didn't bother me. They were they're a decent band. I, um, I, I'm seeing Radiohead. <laughs> yeah, Radiohead. It's right there. Yep. It's right where you don't need to be looking. Looking. Yeah. Uh, but Radiohead was fun because we had Darius in. And he's fighting for like creep and uh, and <laughs> Brian's just like flat out no, no. I don't. And I I understand the band wouldn't even fight for that. No, and I, I mean until recently they hadn't been playing it anymore either. Like it had been it had no. disappeared off their playlist, but uh or the set list rather. But I understand it being in the conversation. Oh yeah, definitely. You're you just can't not, not put it in the conversation. I'm not. You're not getting my vote for it. Well, I've got a deprogrammed joke where every time you, I. Anybody comes in to do deprogram to ask what you guys are doing, and then I pick the most obvious choice <laughs> and throw it out there just to make people angry. I think one of my most, again, one of still one of the best discoveries was was, was Super Drag because, and I'm, I want to do more episodes like Super Drag because Jenny was new to the band and Andy was new to the band, so all yeah. three of us on the panel were just discovering Super Drag. That's interesting, and that was just a lot of fun to see. You know where every where everybody's lists were coming from. Well, then you got to talk to, uh, and then I got to talk to Tom, which, which was fantastic. Yeah, he was he was great. He was super late. It was like after the show, but it still happened. And yeah. I chatted with him for like a good thirty forty minutes or something. And I probably like it, it felt like we probably could have gone at least another twenty or thirty. Yeah. Like the the conversation was just flowing. He's very open with information. Um, I'd love to be able to get uh, more artists in. There was a the time. <laughs> there was a time where I was trying like really hard to make that because I really I do want to do an, an hour or two of deprogrammed, but yeah. not until I'm sure that we can fill the hour. I don't want to say okay, well we're gonna take your calls and stuff, and then go to the second hour, and then it's just me going uh uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> for an hour. So what I also love about this band <laughs> yeah. uh, is that they have a tour van. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm dying to do an episode of the Frogs. Uh, I think you just need to do that. I may end up just doing it by myself. I'll, if you wanted, I'll do. I'll do a discovery. I, I'm piss scared though because you. Yeah, but I'm not going to attack you. Yeah, that's true. You might want to pick somebody safe. Yeah, who's not going to attack you if the band turns out to be <laughs> really bad. But I also know a little bit about the frogs and the, the, it's got a bit of a Nirvana connection, so I can. Well, you know, I can a, dig a, it. a lot of bands in the '90s actually Pearl Jam. The Pumpkins, Beck, all love the Frogs. And yeah. you can find videos of both of Billy Corgan and Eddie Vedder playing with the Which Frogs. Which is why I know that I'm a safe bet to do that as a discovery. Yeah. Because I I probably won't outright hate. And, I mean, yeah, that's part of it because I don't want to say it's a thinking man's band because – they, it's not it's it's a lot of <laughs> right. it's a lot of stupid jokes it's a lot of it's a lot of gay jokes and there's a whole racial album called racially yours well it's a lot of really in, sounds, racially insensitive sounds jokes. like i am the person to... <laughs> it's a lot of racially that insensitive seems jokes. to uh, fit right in with my character uh <laughs> i mean i may may not include that but I, like the rest of the stuff it's just it I find it hilarious, and I think it's real. These are really fun poppy tunes that they're writing the most ridiculous lyrics to. So I don't know. That's the appeal for me. Um, I definitely want to do a full-on discovery of like garbage, because uh, for whatever reason, I've I've liked almost every song I've ever heard by Garbage, mm. but 
I never bothered to check into them. Like I never, I never bought an album. Uh, my mom had the self-titled album with Stupid Girl on it, but I never listened to it. I listened to Stupid Girl. I feel like a couple times, maybe only Happy When It Rains, and I never bothered. I never followed up with them. I never checked into newer records or anything. Hole is another band I definitely yeah, want to do. Either. Well, I, I, I just. I th- garbage is another it's i've always enjoyed the radio hits and then that's as far as i took it it just seems i never like listened to a whole album they seem like they're in my wheelhouse so i don't understand why well, i would why I never didn't listen to their albums see and i mean because i'm an album guy you're an album guy you're a female vocalist guy yeah that's true i don't i mean again it seems that seems right in your wheelhouse too they're less poppy than you like there's some poppy songs i don't know i'm also not that poppy it it they seem like I can go I I go I like some of it seems I like mopey depressing yeah I like, a, I like a little bit of mope so I I don't know I I definitely want to do garbage uh, hum uh, hum might be hard to get people for because that might be too deep but they have the one hit stars right right uh, that one about the uh, Catholic blue cars no it's one of my favorites oh god <laughs> I'm never doing Dishwalla. That's not happening. But uh, Nick Walla wouldn't even do this one at this point. <laughs> Nickelback is going to happen. I have one person who stepped up and decided that they. I, just, I assume that everybody who hates Nickelback is just like what? I don't like Nickelback because I don't like that sound. Yeah, yeah. like they're none of that. I hate. I hate all of that. That sound. Yeah, but it, it doesn't. That being said, it doesn't sound any different than like. Chevelle is that a band? Chevelle's a band. C- Creed is that a band? Creed. That all sound. It all sounds Creed the same. And Nickelback to me. are like are mirror images. What about Days of the New. Is that a is that, that a band? I want to walk through the world of bees all do. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's that one. I want to watch you, yeah. Yeah, I don't. All of that stuff sounds, but I I don't understand why people who listen to that. Whatever that is, <laughs> why they wouldn't like Nickelback. So uh, I think there's a lot of. I think you need to do Nickelback. Well, it's also funny. People t- need to face their Nickelback. It, it's funny because Nickelback they're selling records. Somebody's buying those records. Uh, How is yeah. it possible that I don't know anybody who likes Nickelback? I, I mean, it can't be true. Uh, that that Chad Kroger guy's a millionaire. <laughs> yes. Unless he's he made his money in in supermarkets oh, or. Uh, <laughs> Or from his wife. Just banging Avril Lavigne. Yeah. Are they still together? I don't know. Who knows? I like his grocery store. Just a skater boy. God. Clearly. <laughs> Are you ever going to do an Avril Lavigne? Does she have a, She might actually have enough music for that, but uh, I don't know. Kind of a name is Avril. To. That sounds like a, some like, sort of bug that you want to get out of your garden. Aren't they both Canadian? I think she's Canadian. Uh, I think they are both Canadian. I know. I know that Nickelback's. Yeah, Canadian. she's she's definitely Canadian. Well, then there you have it. I dude, I need to go to Home Depot tomorrow. I got to get some stuff. Yeah. To pour and put on the the garden because the Avril's have been just ripping apart my tomatoes. Yeah, you got to take care of those Avril's. Really do. <laughs> and the Kroger's. <laughs> uh, man, I just I want to see some of these lists because I'd like to to defend some of the choices. Actually, uh, here's one: the Pixies. I feel like we put together a really good list of the Pixies. No, I want to see what your Pixies list is. Is it not up on the wall? It is, but it's like right behind you, so I'm going to go to the website. Oh, okay. Uh, Pixies, no no secret here. Uh, I am a huge Pixies fan. There's definitely, going back now, I would have lost, lost, oh man, I don't remember which ones made it in now. And I can't turn around to look. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. Don't Just turn stall. around. Keep stalling. Don't you hear my heart break out? I'm going to go to music. I wonder if Ace of Bass has enough music to do. A... They did have that one album where all of their... <laughs> Everything was Every on. single one of their... Uh... Every song was a single. That was that was a terrible year for music. What was it, 93? Color Me Bad. <laughs> but we also had... Millie Vanilli. Really vanilla, which should have really uh God Pixies, there we go. Uh but then again we also had uh one of our favorite albums. Yes. Ace of Bass. Jim and the Steve Men. God, why can't I think of in utero? I need to. <laughs> okay, so you guys had uh La La Love You. Good pick. 
Where's my mind? Gigantic debaser. Cecilia Ann. Here comes your man. Green and blues. I bleed. Holly holiday song and head on. Man, there are some picks I would take out of there. Number one. Yeah. Got one thing to say to you. Yeah. Uh. Why no UMass? I had UMass. Come on, man. I had UMass. You got to get physical with these people. I don't understand how neither of them had UMass. UMass is like quintessential. Like, like seriously, no UMass? It's quintessential, if you ask me. Um, um, <laughs> man. I believe the argument was they didn't like... One of the, one of, one of the panel members didn't like the, It's education now! It's like, but oh, I'm sorry you didn't like the, uh, the awesome part. You don't like the hook. <laughs> yeah. Dick. Who was that? I don't remember. Call him out. Nope. <laughs> but even music wise, like I don't want. I, I no broken face. <sighs> I had broken face. I got a broken <laughs> face. I think you and I would have been. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, hey. I know it's a. I would have lost Cecilia Ann at this point to get UMass in. But UMass didn't even make the conversation because I was the only one who had it. Uh, disturbing. What are you going to do? Hmm. You do what you, do what you can with what you got. And, I mean, o- overall, it's still a good list. It just could have been better with UMass. <laughs> yeah. A broken face. I think that's the only one. I feel like that's the only time. Bone machine? I'm just saying there's a couple. I had, of, I had bone machine. There's a couple of. <laughs> I think you and I would have matched exactly. <laughs> uh, huh. What a drag it was. Okay. Well, we had Gigantic, didn't we? Yeah, we had Gigantic. How do you not have Hay just for the opening alone? I don't know, man. But I didn't have Hay, I don't you. think. But I don't know. I'm trying to think of some of the other uh, <laughs> discoveries we had. <laughs> But though that's what's so good about this, I like when I don't agree totally. Well, and I mean, because it, it, it it furthers the conversation. Well, yeah, and lists lists are hard to get anybody. What's another to agree one on. you thought? Uh, what, what's another one controversial that I would know? Well, I know controversial was Steely it's Dan. It's controversial. <laughs> you can just yell anything. Yeah. If it's education, you don't like. <laughs> when we did Steely Dan, uh, afraid oh, I forgot of. you guys did the replacements. Yeah. Was that a discovery for you? That was a discovery. Placements is an amazing band. I had Matt and Rashi. They in. got a couple of songs that just destroy me every time. Matt and Rashi from uh, Feral Conservatives were in for that one. I could see that. I could I, see them liking their placements. And it was a, I mean, again, it was a fun discovery. Every discovery has been fun. Um, the Biscuit? Well, that wasn't a discovery, though. <laughs> yeah, would, but it's just a discovery that somebody would do it. <laughs> Limp Biscuit. it was me and Joe. And Limp Biscuit was a fun conversation because, you know, it, it's one of those bands where some of the music stood up, you know, with mm-hmm. the, some of it, but most of it was nostalgia, real product of its of its time. Yeah, most of it is. Man, I remember being angry and thinking that this was cool. Uh, and <laughs> got <out of> birth. <laughs> We get it. We get it, Fred. Good cover. You should be everywhere now. Let's put you <laughs> and in. he was. Let's Jesus. Put you in everything. He was. I uh, just unlocked you in a uh, wrestling game. Why are you in this? <laughs> they were everywhere, dude. Uh, no, nah, Limp Bizkit was a lot of fun. Uh, Blink-182 was a lot of fun. That was just me and Joe, too. And it was mm. it was a sing-along. Like yeah. him and I were just singing, just singing the songs. all the songs. That was a lot of fun. No, nah, that was great. I, I love that one because uh, Joe went. So radio. <laughs> he did. And I love it when people go radio on your ass. <laughs> I, you know. Ooh, Blur. What ended up what went with Blur? Blur was a lot of fun. Blur was difficult. Um, uh, I found myself. Number one, though. You went with my my favorite. Oh, yeah. Coffee and TV. I mean. I, Every time I hear it, I miss, uh, <laughs> I miss Matt and Nate. I have issues. I knew that I was going to be partially biased to it when I saw it on the, on the list. But then I listen to the song and I'm like, no, I can make a case for this. This is a good song, so I have no problems putting this on. Yeah, uh, and it was pretty agreeable. I mean, there haven't been very many disagreeable episodes. Like I said, Elvis Costello, the three of us were on very different pages. 
and there was a lot of negotiation, which I think the negotiations are fun, too. Yeah, yeah. We had negotiations on the doors a couple weeks ago, which nobody got to hear because a uh, weird naked Indian guy came out here and, and took oh. us out. But uh, Damn it. we got down to, we had nine songs in, in our top ten, two songs left in the conversation. And usually at that point, I play my, I'm the new ear on this, we're going to go with my pick. But both of the songs were on my list. So, and one was a Jenny song, one was a Corey song. <laughs> so it was like as 50 50 as you can be with three people. And it just, it took a, conver- a really deep conversation of, okay, so here are the merits of each song. And considering removing songs from the 10 to get them both in. And we ended up going with the Backdoor Man because we had less from the self titled record. What uh, this is kind of off topic, but I, I think might be interesting. What uh, what what do you? What's your process? Do you, have you developed a process when you uh, when you attack these uh, these lists? Uh, depends on if it's if it's a discovery or if it's a if it's a it's just a regular. Some, if it's something I'm familiar with. Because I'm guessing discovery, you've got to uh, really if it's hunker down and listen. Yeah, if it's if it's a band I'm familiar with, I try to take ten that are just my favorites that I just, I like that I can make a case for Mm -hmm. that. I can, that I just want to be said at some point in the show. I don't care if it gets on, but it, this song needs to at least be brought up. And then the rest of the 10, I try to play the game a little. I think about who I'm playing with. I think about a song that I actually like and can defend if I need to. And I think about where it lands on a record and I think about where it fits in the scope of the band. Like, how do, does it match up to how the band sounds? Like, is it a definitive song? Mm-hmm. It's a pretty deep process, which is why it's a lot of work. Yeah. You Double know, that I, if it's a discovery. I uh, I think of 10 songs that I really, really like, and I write those down. And then I think of 10 other songs that I really, really like, and I write <laughs> those down. Which everybody knows isn't true if you know the uh, new pornographers. Yeah, that didn't happen. The infamous new pornographers list. You had a which long, it, it started out. Long list. It started out on the the long list was really all of their first album, all of their second album, yeah. and all of their set third album. And I was like, yeah, this might be a little too much. I'm yeah. gonna have to. I'm gonna have to cut before I even get to the the fourth album. See, that's what that's the thing that bothers me. Like a band like New Perf- Pornographers, a band like The Doors was actually really hard too. I felt bad cutting songs. Yeah. It, I, it felt like I let them down. I feel like some sometimes I'm looking for the dumbest reasons. Like, oh, it didn't start fast enough. Well, or, and the new pornographers, well, and a lot of times it'll just come down to, I'll, I'll, I, I guess I just have to pick one. Yeah. Uh, but the new pornographers, I feel like we really failed just because we, uh, we, we threw up the, uh, we t- completely threw out pretty much like no Dan Bayar songs, yeah. you know? And then well, we, we get tried. to the end, and it's like, why don't we have it? <laughs> we tried. It's just, I, I don't think, I don't even know how many we threw out, like in into the convo. I mean, yeah, I, it's just, they didn't hit the ones I threw out. Uh, James didn't have. Yeah. Um. I, yeah, just there just weren't any hits. Well, what are you gonna do at that point? You know, sometimes you just have to go with it's the conversation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I feel like I've let my my one of my favorite bands down. Oh man, they're waiting. For <laughs> James is waiting for me to have the hard sell on why the Frogs are the greatest band of all time. I uh, I don't think the Frogs are the greatest band of all time. I just I I be loving the Frogs. There's nothing wrong with you that. like the Frogs, you know. I like them a lot. It's like me. I love the new pornographers. The Frogs have influenced a lot of the music that I like. So I mean, they always everybody always says, ah, uh, you know, you should like who you know, influences your favorite musicians and stuff. You should go backwards and stuff. And I would do that, but it always leads to the Beatles and Led Zeppelin. Dance. Yeah. And I don't have a problem with either band. I just, I don't dig well, them like everybody else does. So I don't dig Led Zeppelin, but I'm going to go. It's ridiculous. I can't imagine anybody would not say that the Beatles were the greatest band of all time. <laughs> I just, I can't imagine anybody ever having that opinion. But I would, I would rather go. I I saw the frog's name first time. I was uh, reading the liner notes in Pisces Iscariot, mm-hmm. and Billy's writing this, you know, notes, and he, he goes, "The frogs, oh how I miss the frogs!" And I was like, "What? 
who the fuck are the frogs? <laughs> <laughs> and then it, that led, of course, well, this story can finally come up. Uh, you remember Half Naked Josh from All Day You Drunks? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so one time at three in the morning, him and I are looking at yellowpages.com or whitepages.com <laughs> or some, some shit. <laughs> this, this story is already off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> and we looked up James Flemian, who is the lead singer and guitar player oh, of no. The Frogs. Yeah. Three in the morning. Uh, three in the morning here, so it's like midnight there, I guess. Mm, give or take. And <laughs> he was listed? Yeah. Okay. We called him. He answers the phone. Yeah. Hello? Hey, is this uh, James Flemian? <laughs> who is this? Who the hell is this? Uh, we're just fans. <laughs> Click. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, cool. We just called the guy from the Frogs. <laughs> And I mean that was going to be a punk band, right? For the most a- part, attitude wise, yes, absolutely. But yeah, but more like sound wise, no, not exactly. But ad- attitude wise, absolutely. They heard they're like very much in your face with with their jokes and and their writing and so like no respect for that. <laughs> I know, right? It's That's weird. why he wears wings, yeah, and the other like, one wears. You wings. always seem to get like. You seem to really get blown off by these people that have been like, like made a career out of being subversive. Yeah. And then as soon as you you're a little subversive too. Yeah. Towards them, boom! They just block you or they yep. hang up on you. Yes. Thanks, Tom That's, Green. Doesn't make any sense. Yes. Yeah. It is what it is, man. What are you gonna do? Well, I don't know. <clears throat> get mad. Get sad. Get angry. Tell Tom Green where he can go, <laughs> which is apparently basic cable. Yes. Uh, so make sure you guys check out the deprogrammed Facebook page. There's a list of bands that, uh, I'd like to talk about or bands that have been suggested that I check out. If you'd like to come in and do an episode, we'd love to have you in. What are you saying? People could actually be guests on the show. Absolutely. It's not even that hard. Just say, (laughs) man, I I just wander out of my backyard, (laughs) man. I like this band. Can I come talk about them? Yes. And then I'll set up a date. It'll happen eventually. <laughs> I, I know some people, because Alice Co- Cooper was one of the first bands. Fredo was like, man, you got to talk about Alice Cooper. You got to talk about Alice mm-hmm. Cooper. And I was like, I'm down. Just I need somebody else to be willing to talk about Alice Cooper with us. I can't. Like, Blink-182 is one thing. Limp Biscuits another, because, like, those are bands I'm familiar with. Alice Cooper was a discovery. Yeah. If it's just me and Fredo, that's not going to be a very interesting show. No. So we got to get at least a third voice in there. So as long as I have three voices on a discovery, it's going to happen. Um, definitely looking for people who are willing to check out. You know, I'm going to go to my own Facebook page here and see, because I've got a list of three or four bands I want to do uh, full on, full on discoveries of. I know Hum, Hole, and well, hole Garbage. Well, you know, and again, it's one of those ones that I don't understand why I haven't latched onto them at some point. Uh, garbage, Veruca Salt, Hole, and Hum. Veruca Salt, really? Yeah. Volcano Girls. Yeah. It's going to be on my list. See there? See there? I just really just stint at that. Maybe. Or maybe <laughs> not. Who knows? I, I mean, I'd like to I'd like to dive you, in and find out. You know what you should do? Hmm? Letters from Cleo. <laughs> I just saw her on the Twitter earlier. I should have tweeted her at her. Uh, also looking for, I, I know some people are di- into, they might be giants. They're, they're like one of the top ones on my, uh, suggested mm-hmm. list, but I don't have, I don't have, I don't remember. The desire. Well, nobody's, nobody's, nobody's hopped in on it. Really? Yeah. I feel like they have like massive sand, massive sands. I feel like they have massive fans. I thought so too. I thought there'd be no problem. I thought for that sure that out. there was just a ton of people that love them. Another one I'm sitting on, I've been sitting on for a while, is Ween, because that's going to be a full discovery. And uh, I know a lot of people who like Ween, mm-hmm. but uh, I just haven't reached out to say, hey, let's do this, because it's going to be quite the undertaking, I think. I always equate them with uh, with like feces and poop. I don't okay. know why. Maybe it's because Piss Up a Rope, that song? Yeah, you know what? That's it. <laughs> it's weird. Because that is exactly what it creep. is. Is there's with a turd for a paddle? No, weird. Yeah. Okay. Mystery solved. There you go. Um, and I also really want to do the Two Man Gentleman Band. I don't think a lot of people have heard of them. I don't know who that is. They they great. And then uh, I lastly I have the Please Explains. I've got Kiss, Nickelback, Coldplay, and Three Eleven on my Please Explain. <laughs> 
I feel like that's a strong <laughs> list of please explain. And how it not that we're trying to be elitist. No, we just really hate these bands. It's more, more so. I w- I want to understand what it's. It's like if I wasn't on deprogrammed. No. I want to listen to why you like these bands. I want you to come in and tell me what's so great about these bands because I just don't get it. A lot, all four of those bands. Well, Nickelback, I didn't really try, but all four of the. The other bands I tried. I I try to understand what's what's so great about them, and I I just I don't get it. So, and with please explains it's great because I don't have to listen to anything that week. I have full veto power. Nice. Uh, whoever's on the panel, they can bring. They each get to bring their twenty songs. Um, they just have to present the, them to me ahead of time. And I have when we get to the show, I have full veto power, and it's cool because I can go nah nah. I don't like that song. It's out. And that's, for me, that's fun. <laughs> Plus, like I said, I don't have to listen to a, an entire discography that week. Anyway, if you're interested in any of those, check them out. Follow me on the uh, the Twitter, at the Hulkster. I decided I didn't feel like making a uh, deprogram. I've got enough Twitters. Is, yeah. I've got too many We've Twitter accounts. Many I don't need Twitters. another one. I don't need another new one. Um, Jenny, thank you for listening live. Um, oh, Coheed and Cambria from Nathan. Oh, Nathan oh. says he's in for Veruca Assault. Yeah, he would be. <laughs> And uh, they might be giants, actually, as well. Oh, okay. So maybe I'll get Nathan in here for they might be giants. Because it's been a while since Nathan's been in. Nathan did the Weird Al one with me, mm-hmm. which was a lot of fun. And he did the Presence one with us. And that mm-hmm. was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. I always get the... I, I know Nathan's not a, a not music guy. It's, I just... I don't... He's Yeah, like he's a musician. <laughs> yeah. So I don't understand. Like, I, I thought he'd be all over the show. I, I think he's waiting for an... He's that kind of guy. He's he waiting wants, for that invitation. Invitations. But I don't know what music you he's, like, man. He's complicated. He's an Avril Lavigne song? Yes, that's right. He's a skater boy. <laughs> Hello, Nathan. Skater boy. Yeah. <laughs> Said see you later, boy. Boy. B-O-I, just so you know. Terrible song. Uh... <laughs> So we didn't we didn't do a band this week at school. Thanks for sitting in with me, Matt. Yeah, it would have been madness if I just sat here. <laughs> we just been. I don't know why they don't <laughs> just pick my songs. <laughs> that might have been funny too. Yeah, Who knows? Sure. All right, we're uh, we're out of here. Next week is Red Hot Chili Peppers, and uh, decide for yourself if uh, Jing Jong Gong 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 Gong. It's not a lyric. Day. You can decide it's if that's just, a lyric. It's not a lyric. Is it a lyric or is it a ra- racist comment? <laughs> you decide. You be the judge. Uh, we'll see you all next week. Thanks for uh, thanks for hanging in and uh, good night.